have you all back here for the next episode of Real Talk, raw and relevant conversations, which my two next guests absolutely suit to a T. You would know them across social media because they've got pretty big profiles. They're a pretty big deal, but they're a big deal because they're actually beach volleyballers who have a silver medal. Yes, that is right. We're talking to Talika Clancy and also, here we go, <laughs> Maria Faye del de Achato de Sola. I was trying to get the... It's actually, if I say it a bit bogan, it's Maria Faye Atacho de Sola. Yeah, that's not bad. Not bad. I'll give you 60. I don't know. 60%. 60%. 60%. 60%. Maria Faye Atacho de Sola. <laughs> <laughs> Is no, that better? Good. It's good. It's good. Okay. Okay. I've heard worse. We'll be able to go a bit into the background as to... Uh, why you have a beautiful name. You both have really good names, actually. I'm so basic. <laughs> yeah, like, Maria Faye and Talika. My middle name's Shanice, too. Yeah. I just like Talika with Shanice Clancy. Yeah, like, it's it, like, like, that yeah. is just suits me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to hear the one word that best describes you both. Yeah. <laughs> Let's kick things off with a fast five. Keep that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Favourite thing about each other? Oh. Yeah, clearly not much. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I find that I can't bring it down to one. There's lots of things. But one thing, mm, it's fun. Like, we make it fun. Yeah, we, we do. We have a lot of fun. We do. I think <laughs> people will genuinely be surprised if they actually see us around tournaments and just training and how we operate. Like, we're just not that really, like, we're really relaxed. Like, we know the yeah. time when we need to be serious and when yeah. we're off and we keep it really enjoyable. Mm. Okay, so then you've got really good balance as well. Yeah. All right. Um, least favorite thing about each other? Probably my attitude. Well, for you. Uh, <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> I'm like, I'll say it. You don't want to say it because you're so kind. But I, I'll, t- I'll say it. I'm moody. I can go up and down and all around. <laughs> Shanice. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, that's Shanice. That's not Talika. <laughs> the middle name comes out of the <laughs> What about for you, Maria Faye? As in, like, well, T has to say it. Um, gosh, it's a bit hard. No, she doesn't have one. Is there, like, an annoying trait? Surely it's something. Like, no, that- she's so, like, patient and tidy mm. and, like, because obviously we have to live together 24-7 as well. Mm. So we always, I don't even know how we do it, but we've, <laughs> we're, when we walk into a hotel, I always get the window signed. Yeah, <laughs> it just gets, works out. Yeah, we just, like, yeah. It just naturally happens. Yeah. Wow, this is so great. Okay, <laughs> party trick for both of you. I'm not the biggest party animal. But yeah, you leave that for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she takes it for the team. Do you have a party trick? Tr- like, do you have... Not really. Like, can you mm. touch your elbow with your tongue or can you do the worm or... Mm, no, no, we're pretty basic, hey? We just dance to the beat. We don't really do the yeah. sprinkle or any of that. <laughs> Um, do you have one to look at? No, I do really you, you don't. You can just skull. You can just neck a yeah. drink. Yeah, well, see, I always, like, wanted to, like, well, I never used to like tequila and everybody used to obviously to like what tequila. So I was like, oh. I wanted that to be a party <laughs> trick. But, yeah, I went to Cancun last year and I was like, oh, I actually like this. But I'm not a skuller, let's be honest. Okay, a sipper. Yeah, you don't like I'm shots. an athlete. I don't do those types of things. <laughs> I don't this drink. Is so <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one. Uh, first kiss for both of you. When? Who? Who and when? Take us back. <laughs> I think I do remember. <laughs> I think his name's Aaron, and he was in year seven. After, no, it was in a, it was in an excursion. We went to the IMAX in Sydney. It's like a cinema. Where it's like a, um, three D, and this. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure it was at that excursion. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What about for you? Talika? Mine was later. You would know. Do you remember Bobby? Dutchy. Yeah, the Dutch guy. <laughs> yeah. It was uh, like my first World Juniors and yeah, I had my first like little fling thing <laughs> for a couple <laughs> of weeks. <laughs> and then we're in yeah, we're in Holland and yeah, it was a bit of a babe, really, like tan with you blue eyes. Yeah, 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 yeah. We spoke heaps after too. Oh my god. That's probably why my love life is tragic. <laughs> I'm seeing, I'm seeing the pattern now. <laughs> I still like that boy from his year. <laughs> okay, last but not least, dream job. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing, doing it. it. Yeah. <laughs> 
I feel like that's what uh, Harrison is writing our fast five. I think he intended for that. Well yeah. done. Well done. Um, okay. Now we move on to one word that best describes you both. So Maria, if I'll start with you. Uh, I think passionate. Mm-hmm. I'm a very passionate person. Okay. That Latina what? fire comes out. Yeah. Yeah. But even I think in like different aspects of life, like. I'm a passionate lover. <laughs> when I love, I love. <laughs> yeah. When I care, I care. Um, so I think passionate, I reckon, would be oh, the one. Love yeah. this. Yes. And what about mm. for you, Talekla? Yeah, mine definitely does a full circle and comes back. Like, I'd definitely say sassy. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. I was just born this way. <laughs> <laughs> Came out with the name. I was Came born. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and why? Like, I mean, ex- Give us some insight as to your sass. Um, but I think I'm just like, I think I'm the same too. I don't really do thing and do things in halves as well. So I think that just comes out with everything that I do. Like I'm just kind of like all in with my emotions if I'm, and that kind of just is how I roll mm. with life. I don't know. It just comes out. You're both so different yet maybe there's so many similarities like you're both living your dream and it's all or nothing for both of you but in different ways which is probably why you balance each other out so well yeah we'll talk about the volleyball career but just quickly I would like to say that our podcast is partnered proudly with workplacelaw.com.au um the workplace law is led by Shane and Athena the directors there and they basically help you with any of your problems uh, in the workplace or outside and they're pretty genuine in helping um women and men whoever you may be whatever gender you align yourself with uh in terms of like helping you build a brand outside of your sport and if you need some representation um at a tribunal or if you need some help going through your contract and you just want some sort of idea like you don't need a player manager to go through that they are more than welcome uh, more than willing to help you with that so workplacelaw.com.au shane and athena will help you and they've helped us here at real talk which we love but now it is time for your story so maria Faye, let's talk about how you began playing volleyball and then we'll talk about you Talika and how you got into volleyball I love how you did that Spanish accent then I mean I'm, tr- I'm really <laughs> trying <laughs> nah um well I was born in Peru I come from Peru um born into a very sporty family my sister played volleyball so I guess you know that younger sister following her sister's footsteps I would always go to her games and her training so I literally started touching the ball digging the ball when I was three oh. so um yeah I I also love playing all sorts of different sports. I was always outside. I couldn't sit still for more than literally five minutes. Always wanted to play. Um, But I guess volleyball was more of a natural sport for me since I was around it so much. Um, So I kept playing all through my primary school in Peru. um, And then I started playing for a club at a really young age, like seven years old. And then I moved to Australia with my mum when I was 11. Mm -hmm. Moved to Sydney. And then my brother was actually the one who introduced me to beach volleyball down at Manly Beach. He, I arrived in December, so it was summertime in Australia. And he's like, I, he was in Sydney already. Um, and he said, I write, I've put you down for a site social tournament down at Manly with my friends and I. And yeah, that's literally how I got introduced to beach volleyball. And it was just love at first sight. I loved everything about it. Um, wow. And that's kind of how I got into beach volleyball, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Next minute, you're a silver medalist at the Olympics <laughs> representing Australia. Wow. What about for you, Talekwa? Um, Yeah, it's still, like, very similar in a sense, but obviously uh, not three. <laughs> I started playing. And not from Peru. Yeah, <laughs> definitely not from Peru. <laughs> King so, of Roy, yeah, girl. Yes, yeah. the peanuts go us. <laughs> um, no, yeah, so literally just such an active child. Like, I, I don't know what it was, but I knew I was going to be an athlete. I just... It was just ingrained in me. And then, yeah, I was always country kid, doing every sport that I could do. And my mum was 17 when she had me. So my mum's little sister, baby sister, is only a couple years older than me. And she was just graduating high school um, when I was about to go into grade eight. And she said, oh, you should play volleyball. And very similar in the sense, you know, as you want to do like what your family does and your aunties, uncles, sisters, everybody. So I was like, yep, I'll give it a go and just... Yeah, it did not take long for me to fall in love with it. Um, and I was so fortunate enough that I got talent identified through the years and I moved down to be a part of the uh, Queensland Academy of Sport from Kingaroy to Brisbane when I was 15. And that was the first time I ever played beach volleyball. It was not 
the same love. I actually hated you, it. Like really? I hated it because I went from indoor, you know, like I could move and jump and then I hopped on the court at Sandstorm <laughs> where we're back now. It's so funny that I can literally point at the court and be like, that's the first time I ever played <laughs> beach volleyball and I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it so well and it was a stinking hot day in Brisbane and I couldn't move, I couldn't do anything, but it quickly turned into love and then, yeah, I've been in the full-time athlete in the program since I was 16. Wow. Yeah. Turning 30. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you're turning 30. You're 28 still, Marika. Yeah. Turning 29. Turning 29. Yeah. yeah. And then, so can we talk about uh, getting into that cycle of even being chosen and how that even happens that you get paired up? Because you both went to Rio with separate partners, uh, quarterfinals for you, Unfortunately, Didn't win a game. Okay, cool. You said that for me. <laughs> but you're still an Olympian. And then you come back and you start a new cycle. And so how did it? How did the partnership form? Well, our first international event was actually back in 2012 at Junior World Under 21s. Yeah, Under 21s. Yeah, Under 21s yeah. um, World Championship in Canada where we actually got a bronze medal. And I personally knew straight away that we had something very special, very unique. Um, it was just easy. Um, and we were both in the same page. Um, and then... Uh, we got back and then, yeah, I mean, life just took us a separate way. We had different partnerships. Um, Do you pick those? Uh, not a, not, a, not mm. back in the day where we were juniors. We um, It gets sort of paired yeah. up for well, you. I guess you yeah. do have a bit of a say. Yeah, you get a bit of it, but it has, still has but, to be very much cleared by the federation. Yeah. But you do get a level, but sometimes you Okay, don't. so you had success when you were for juniors and then it took you, what, 2012? Yeah. And then it took your whole... Yeah. Whole nother what? When did you join up, link up? End of 2017, so yeah, pretty much 2018. Oh, yeah. gosh, so much time. <laughs> I feel like it was just the right time, though. I feel yeah. like um, we both had to go through all those years of experience and um, things that we went through. Um, and I think the right time for us to come together was just, it was perfect timing almost. Um, divine timing. Divine. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and it was just, we just, pick it out where we left off um pretty much we had the opportunity to play together in three events in december 2017 and we won all three events so that was kind of like okay we've we got something here yeah um, Look, looking at your wikipedia pages all i see is gold 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 gold, 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 gold. <laughs> it's like oh bronze here and then a silver and then i'm going all right paris 2024 like yeah you went you got the bronzes juniors you get the silver um at uh, tokyo just gone and Maybe we can talk about that before we talk about Paris. But take us through the, the pool matches and then preparing for the US in that grand final because it was huge. I still remember what I was doing. You know when they talk about these you know, 9-11 bombings and, yeah. and these huge moments mm -hmm. in life? I remember I was with my roommate, Alexis Mavrantonis at the time, watching you two. And we were like, go, go! <laughs> I was like, oh, my God! It was, it was beautiful to remember yeah. and now speak with you both. Wow, I don't even know where to start, <laughs> really. Um, yeah, it was just, you know, Tokyo actually was so special. I think people just assumed, obviously, like not having family and no crowds, but for us it just felt very, like, at ease and normal. I think the Australian team was just incredible. I think it made everybody closer. So it was a really still a very special. And I probably, obviously, I still loved my Rio, my first Olympics, but I think Tokyo was, there was something extra special about it, not just because of what we, you know, coming home to Olympic medal. <laughs> <laughs> but for us, like, we always knew, I think from the very beginning of our partnership, we knew that we we're going to be in that Olympic final. Like, there's just, wow. I could see it. As soon yeah. as, like, we came together, I could see it, I could feel it. Like, it was like, yeah, you know, we're just yeah. building for that moment. Yeah. yeah. We just knew. And so, um, and I think it was so incredible, even though we had two very different journeys, it was that experience from our first Olympics, as soon as we, you know, stepped out on the court, it, we just kept building every game, yeah. every game. And even though, like, I didn't have a great game against Russia, I'm more than happy to say that was my worst game. And we and we didn't get to top our pool and we matched with um, the Canadians who were the world champions and really good friends with us as well. Yeah. We matched them probably quite early in the quarterfinal, which was a huge match. But we just, I don't know, we just knew. I think that connection was... Yeah. So strong. And it was awesome too because it, it was felt 
by everyone at home and we mm. couldn't see it, but it was awesome when we came home and how everybody was, you know, sharing and talking to us about how special it was. So yeah. that was I- incredible, but it definitely wasn't an easy journey. <laughs> COVID definitely yeah. created a, a few challenges and just life, like everybody, like everybody was so incredible, like all mm. athletes who, and for Australian team to actually deliver, like the amount of medals that we did, it was just incredible, but... Yeah, so much. It's too hard you to really did, go yeah, through play by play. You had it medaled at in beach volleyball for twenty one years. Yeah, since so, since Sydney. Yeah. Yeah. So that was another dynamic. Do you think it was extra special too? Because you could feel sure there was no crowds and we couldn't be there to support you in person, but you knew you were doing it for more than yourselves? A hundred percent. Like we like T say, we felt the love from back home mm. through our phones. Like the amount of messages we received, it was just so special. Oh. And because it was actually during that time where I think Brisbane and Sydney were in lockdown, it was like yeah. two weeks that everyone got so involved and super attached. And it, we really literally felt it like it was everyone was around us physically there, even though there was no one there. Yeah. <laughs> like it was it was a bizarre feeling, but it was so real. Like it was, yeah, yeah it's it didn't hard really, like, to put it to words. Yeah, it is because yeah. it didn't like... Because people like will ask and be like, oh, it just must have been so odd not having crowds. Like we were fortunate enough to play a few tournaments, so we kind of already knew what it felt like. But okay. honestly, when we step out there, you're just so in the zone. Yeah. Like I couldn't hear or see or think about anybody else. So I think if it was a packed stadium, I don't know if I actually would have noticed it <laughs> so much, to be yeah. honest. Um, yeah, yeah, we did such a great job, job in that. But yeah, it was... You did such a I kind of pinch myself a bit, not going to lie. Like, Can it's still you get the weird. Medals? Like, pinch yourself and show us all the medals. <laughs> all I... my love dints on my... Yeah. <laughs> oh. I literally slept with it, hey. Like, it was... <laughs> like, it carri- like, I carried it with me everywhere. And mm. I remember because, like, obviously, like, I had a, a few nights heavy. where I carried around with me. And I remember you were like, oh, just give me any medal because somebody grabbed it. And I was like... Nah, I already got a dent in mine. <laughs> I, <laughs> I was know like which Christine mine. and Glenn. I was like, nah, this one's mine. <laughs> it, it is. It has like all your little, yeah, little imprints, I guess, that you'd yeah. have on there. Very heavy. 550. Nearly a cake. Gosh, you could do Nearly. some. Yeah, yeah, some bicep in, curls. In yeah. Exactly go, what I did you. in quarantine. Yeah. <laughs> like, especially afterwards, <laughs> waiting to get out. Oh, it, it was yeah. a whole a whole journey, which is so fascinating to talk to athletes about it, particularly because you've had time to reflect on it as well. Um, Maria Faye, I actually spoke to you on SEN, yeah. like when you're in quarantine and I got some sort of idea uh, and insight into it and so did the listeners. But in that grand final, could you feel it almost slipping away? Like, is it so hard when something's out of your control? I don't know what. Um, I wish we could replay it, hey. Um, I wish I, I don't know if UT had these thoughts, but when you win the semi, right, you're like, hell yeah, I got a medal, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But sometimes going to the final, you want to play it as if it's a bronze medal game and if you lose, you don't get anything. Yeah. So I wish maybe I could have treated it as a bronze medal match and be like, okay, I'm going to go all out because if I don't win, I'm going to get nothing. Okay. So yeah. did you go in a bit conservative? I don't know if conservative was the word because we definitely said we got to attack this game because one, we always go one for one against the US girls. We play them literally three months, two months before and we beat them. So we've always got, we know each other's game so well. They're okay. going to come ahead. April Ross, the defender, the American defender, has won bronze and silver. So she's going for that gold. Um, and, you know, same with Alex steps up in these big tournaments. Um mm. So we knew they were going to come out hard. So we obviously from point number zero, we had to make sure we we were here to compete. Yeah. Um, Which you were. We, I mean, course, you don't yeah. get to that stage they, if you're not a competitor. Yeah. To their credit, they played an like, error-free game. They played in incredible. Mm. Um, yeah, they, yeah, they played incredible and probably, I don't know, I, I feel like we didn't play to a top game. So if we would have, then it would have been a different story. So, yeah. Yeah. It, it's very different too because obviously not all sports are the same, but we have to lose, you know, to get a mm. silver. So that's what yeah. is so hard, even though it's such a huge achievement and it takes, oh, honestly, like I'm still for the journey that we had to take to get there. Like 
the COVID stuff and that was like, so I'm never been more grateful. I think this holds so much more value, mm. um, but there's definitely still that. Yeah. Yeah. You fire. know, like, yeah, <laughs> it's still just like bitter, bittersweet. Yeah. It's still, it is a bit, a bit tough, but yeah, like Marie Faye said, like we, we played each other four times last year. We mm. were both two for two, but they got us at the best one. I would just, mm. I wouldn't even matter if we lost to them three times, but I would happily take yeah. that yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> like, so yeah. yeah, it's a, it's a tough one. And, and especially cause we do play on a world tour and world circuit. People don't know that about beach volleyball. So mm. every person that we're playing, we played them like week to, pr- week. Multi- week to week, multiple times, maybe ridiculous amounts in a year like yes that's a great point so we know each other so so well, so we know well. What they're gonna do yeah. yeah every single time yeah I, and I think so from my perspective and I'm sure our audience perspective will agree none of us well unless other Olympians are listening in but we have never been to an Olympic Games as an athlete we've never achieved a medal so the fact that you both got to stand on the dice together and you got a silver medal that you came home from the fact that you even went to an Olympic Games you've been to two and the second time you come home with a medal like <coughs> we'll I'll never get there so many people never get there and I think um, I just really need you both to know that that's so incredible and I know that you're both proud of it but be so proud of that. It's bloody cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, we do we do look back and we're like, far out, that's pretty cool. Hey, we have an Olympic medal around <laughs> that <laughs> like, like, people go, like, we were actually talking about this last week in Mexico. People go to three, four Olympics and don't get any medals. Mm-hmm. Like, this is our second one and we actually got a medal. Yeah. <laughs> and we're still so young still and we're still, like, technically beach volleyball partnerships, you know, um, players play together for five, six, seven years before they actually get success. Yeah. Whereas we've just gone like straight to it. Yeah. <laughs> so sometimes we just got to like sit back and be like, far out, like, good job. Yeah. No calls. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on, don't leave me. Yeah. It is. It's so, yeah, so, you're so right. Yeah, and in so know, many sports. Yeah. Like I'm heavily involved in NRL. How many players do I know that have never won a premiership or even made a grand final? So many. Yeah. But yeah. you like ticked it off, been to a games, get a medal, Paris 2024, you only have to wait a couple of years. Yeah. yeah. Can you, do you get a choice? Do you stay together? Like can, what happens with your partnership? Is it awkward? Do I bring this up? No. no. We're no. staying together. <laughs> yeah, we're staying together. <laughs> yeah, we're, 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 we like spoke obviously, you know, we're with each other 24 seven, mm-hmm. poor Jack. Her husband, Jack, I spend more time. Wheel. I spend more time with Maria Faye. <laughs> Maybe COVID like brought, gave gave I gave him back. Yeah. <laughs> gave Maria Faye back to him. Um, but you know, yeah, we already like spoke. We're like as soon as twenty thirty two came out too. We're like, yeah, yep. that does. Yes. Like, so it's yeah. funny because it's it actually makes me laugh because everyone's like, oh, how good for the young ones coming through, and it's like I'm going. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. yes, it's really good and I encourage more people to play and I'd love to build our sport, but I'm like, you got to take me to yeah. the spot. Like, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> There's the sass. <laughs> You're like passionate. Yes, mm. we'll stay together. Yeah. That's what works so well. In terms of the sport, is that what is almost a little um, confronting? Is that now that you do get a medal, you open your sport up to so many more Australians and you'd probably notice that there will be more people trying to play particularly because 2032 is around the corner. Yeah. 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 Which is great. We want to grow our sport. (laughs) But not great. But yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But stay there. (laughs) Don't get better. (laughs) No, it's really good. Like seeing our sport grow, you know, it's one of the thing, one of the main things we do it, right? We want to inspire those kids to start beach volleyball because it's such an exciting sport. Like it fits our culture so well too as a country. You know, it's outdoors, it's beachy, it's fun, it's competitive. Um, so yeah, no, it's great to see, um, the amount of kids that are getting more involved. How can we get around beach volleyball more? Because I do feel like it's almost surf life saving. Like, you know, the Ironman Nutrigrain series, incredible athletes, some of, if not the best mm-hmm. yet it, it occasionally gets shown online, which they've tried to bring back, but it doesn't get the, the same publicity that we do in other team sports. Yeah, no, I think it's really like, if you really want to start and honestly, I'm very, envious now because kids are starting so much younger like I wish I was playing beach volleyball so much younger so it is incredible to see but the best way to actually get involved is to just like go on your 
um, get into Google and go like Volleyball Queensland and or like New South Wales Volleyball. That's the way to, to see what events are coming because there is opportunities there. Play it in school. Like school's cup is so much fun and volleyball is literally like just take your friends. Like it is yeah. such a fun sport even if it, you know, you don't have aspirations to go to the Olympics. That's what's so special about our sport as well. But it is perfect. Like it fits the Aussie lifestyle yeah. so, so well. Um, but so I wish that it would get a bit more attention, but it's awesome now to like show that, like to give a bit more, what's the word? Like, publicity. yeah, publicity yeah. to it. Like that's, Exposure. Yeah, exposure. Yeah, that's the word. Um, that has, yeah, been incredible. And especially like, not to just take beach volleyball own horn, but you know, like people <laughs> like fight, like we get the best venues for the Olympics. Like, it's just like, how is this not translating back to like Australia? Like yeah. mm. literally 2024, 20, we're going to be in the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. Like beach volleyball, like that's right there. Right there. LA, it's going to be right at the Santa Monica Pier. Like we do get at the best stadiums. Yeah. Beach yeah. volleyball, it is the best venue sport at the Olympics. It's literally yeah. a party on the beach. Like, yeah, how more is. Australian do you want to be? Yeah. Like, <laughs> you can't get more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> as long as maybe they're selling like four X or V B. So true. Oh, girls, it's been so great to catch up. I really appreciate you both coming on. It's great to get an insight into the great game. Um, and then in terms of like moving forward, just to to wrap it all up, I guess um, hopes and dreams is obviously a gold medal. But what's next before then? Well, we got World Champs and Com Games this year coming up, so mm-hmm. big year ahead. We obviously want to turn our bronze medal from World Champs into a gold and our silver from Com Games into a gold. So we have a few medals to turn into gold. Cool. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, Paris is around the corner. So, um, yeah, exciting times ahead, really. Yeah. Yeah, we just Same keep goals. growing. Like yeah. We just keep growing and evolving. And, yeah, you know, going to two Olympics is incredible. So it's kind of like we've hit this new progression as well. I think people don't really know to... I don't know if it was just for myself, but, you know, going through Olympic cycles is actually really difficult. And to, like, refine that motivation and maybe, like, reinvent yourself actually is pretty tough. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, like, I think for us too, I think it was awesome how we could sit back and still have that fire and motivation when, and we still have so much more we want to, want mm. to achieve. Yeah. So. And we're all about personal development as well, like T just mentioned, like the growth and all that sort of thing. We're huge. So that's that's one of our main things as well not just on the court but as people um we love just being better people than we were yesterday <laughs> well i can see that and it comes across um in both of you especially on your social media too like people you have f- social media followings because you're lovable people people want to get to know you and they can learn off you both i hope so <laughs> <laughs> yeah you definitely i try <laughs> Oh, thank you so much to Lequa and Maria Faye. I really appreciate it. And for everybody listening, this podcast is brought to you by workplacelaw.com.au. So if you do need representation, you know you can reach out to Shane and Athena and the team at Workplace Law because they are genuine in their help. They've helped us here at Real Talk and uh, they're about as raw and relevant as it gets. So in terms of being passionate, they are very passionate about players and uh, gaining the skills and confidence to take control of your own careers on and off the field. Love yous and leave yous. Until next time, I hope we are talking about you both when you come back from Paris, maybe beforehand, but I really, really appreciate it. And thanks again. Thank Thank you. you.